Oof, it's always so cold here in the UK. Welcome to episode two of sleep. This video is all about sleep hygiene. By the way, that doesn't mean how clean you are when you go to bed and also sleep cycles. And when you mix the two, so sleep hygiene and sleep cycles together, you are gonna get an excellent night's sleep and feel super duper refreshed. So this is a two part series on how to sleep. Episode one was all about how to sleep faster and different techniques to help you fall asleep faster. And this is episode two, where we're looking at sleep hygiene, sleep cycles, and all the tips and tricks that are gonna help you sleep faster. So welcome to my channel. If you haven't been here before, we talk about everything in healthcare to keep you healthy and happy. And as always, in every single video I say it, in the description below, the whole video is chaptered. So if at any point you want to find a specific piece of information, feel free to click it and click on that relevant chapter. However, as I always say, it's really important that you watch the entire video so you're gonna get a good understanding of it all. Also, if you do find this information helpful, please don't forget to click that like button. It's gonna help the video grow. It's gonna help the video get to more people so it can help more people and it's gonna help me out. So sending you those awesome vibes. Okay, so before we begin, let's do a quick summary of why sleep is so important. Sleep is massively important at keeping us healthy. When we sleep, our brain refreshes. It's like like restarting your computer, it refreshes and it's super fast and it's super focused. That's exactly what happens to us and it helps us focus more, it helps improve our memory, it helps keep us healthy, it helps regulate hormone levels and also a lack of sleep and a lack of good sleep cycles can contribute to an increased risk of cancer. So bear that in mind as well. Now, in this video, we're gonna look at all the different things and tips and sleep hygiene and cycles that are all gonna help you become more refreshed. But if you haven't seen episode one, I'm gonna say it one last time. If you haven't seen episode one, you really need to watch that before you watch episode two, which is this episode, because in episode one, we talk about five different techniques that are gonna help you fall asleep faster. So you need to watch them first and then follow up by this, which is gonna work hand in hand and really be a beat of a video on how to fall asleep faster and you're gonna become a pro at it and you're gonna have epic sleep as a result of it. So if you have watched episode one, let's begin. So let's begin with the tips and tricks that are gonna help you fall asleep faster. So tip number one is getting a warm shower or warm bath before going to bed. It's gonna help relax all your muscles. It's gonna help relax all those stress levels that build up that you're feeling all tense. It's just gonna help relax those muscles. And if you remember the techniques that we spoke about in episode one, it was all about relaxing those muscles. So the warm shower or warm bath are gonna work hand in hand to really help you sleep faster. And actually a study showed that a warm shower before going to bed can help you fall asleep sleep faster by up to 36%, which is pretty amazing stuff to say you're just getting a shower. Moving on to tip number two, you need to stay away from those phones, those laptops, those TVs, those MacBooks, those iPads, whatever you use, those electronic devices, you need to stay away from them. They say two hours before going to bed, but I'm gonna say three hours just to be on the safe side. They emit blue light, which then reduces your natural melatonin, which the melatonin is basically our natural hormone that we make that helps us go to sleep. It helps to make us feel sleepier and more tired, especially at night when it starts to get dark and you start to feel tired, that's because your melatonin is slowly increasing. But then what happens is if you have the blue light, it's gonna go boom and it's gonna go down and that means you're not gonna feel sleepy and it's gonna be difficult to fall asleep. So stay away from them. Moving on to tip number three, you need to stay away from caffeine at least six hours before going to bed. So if you're going to bed at 10 p.m., the last cup of coffee or the last cup of tea needs to be 4 p.m. maximum. This again is gonna stop you from falling asleep, especially if you have difficulty falling asleep. You need to stay away from that caffeine. And also, have a look at different drinks that you're having because sometimes they have caffeine in them, certain drinks, certain teas have a lot of caffeine in them. Obviously coffee is one, but other drinks can have caffeine in them as well. Other foods can have them as well. So have a good little read, do a bit of research as well. If there's something in particular that you always have at night, just check if it's got caffeine in it as well because it could actually have it without you knowing. Moving on to tip number four, it's all about having the room at a cooler temperature. This means about 16 to 20 degrees Celsius, which is about 60 to 60. 67 Fahrenheit. The reason for this is when it's a bit cooler in the room, it signals to your body that it's time for sleep. Our bodies like it a bit cooler when we go to sleep. Obviously, you're going to be covered as well, so you're not going to be freezing at night, but having a cooler temperature in your bedroom is going to help you fall asleep faster and better. And tip number five, this one's a bit of a random one, but it's all about the clock that you might have in your room. Now, if you have an analog clock, which goes tick tock, tick tock, okay, definitely get rid of that because that can go on your mind and you're just constantly thinking of that sound and as you're hearing it and you can't fall asleep, it makes you feel more 
anxious and stressed because why am I not falling asleep and I've got work tomorrow at this time and I've got to be up at this time and it's now 12 o'clock or whatever so get rid of that analog clock if you've got one in there and also if you've got a digital clock that makes no sound still get rid of it because you're going to be tempted to keep turning and looking at it and when you keep looking at it again it's going to ruin that cycle that we've created from the techniques in episode one for you to fall asleep so get rid of those things so they're not a distraction when you're going to sleep okay so moving on to tip number six the next tip that I want to talk to you about is managing physical symptoms look if you've got a cold at the moment if you're congested at the moment if you've got a headache all of these things can stop you from falling asleep or are going to make it difficult for you to fall asleep so let's say for example you're congested or you've got a blocked nose and you've been struggling go and speak to your pharmacist go and speak to your healthcare professional get some treatments for it try some remedies or watch some of my videos on colds and flus and how to recover from them i will leave a link to up here and in the description below there's loads of different things that you can do but they're going to help with those physical symptoms that are going to stop you from falling asleep now moving on to tip number seven this is all about optimizing your bedroom look first of all your bedroom should only be for sleeping if you're using your bedroom for I don't know, eating in, if you're using your bedroom to work in, this is one of the worst things you can possibly do because you are creating this association with work and pleasure, or whatever you want to call it, in the bedroom and it's not a place for sleep. So your brain thinks it's that kind of place. So you need to cause a disassociation. You need to disassociate that section, your bedroom, from anything else and it's only there for sleep. So your brain knows as well, as soon as you go into that room, it's sleep time. It's not work time, it's not watching TV time, it's sleep time. Also, make sure it's super dark in your bedroom. Look, if you're going to sleep and you've got really thin curtains and you've got a light outside your window and there's that light coming in, it's going to be difficult falling asleep. Anybody is going to find it difficult to fall asleep. Me, anyone, okay? So it's not just you who's going to find it difficult to sleep when there's a light coming in. So invest in some good curtains, some good light blocking curtains, invest in something like that. Get an eye mask, get whatever you need, okay, to help you fall asleep better. These kinds of things are all gonna impact you, and it's certain things that we just don't think about, and we just think, oh, I can't fall asleep, but these could be causing it as well. Now, moving on to tip number eight, it's all about food. Make sure you're not having a massive, heavy, stodgy meal late on in the evening. Look, you're cut off, really really should be for your evening meal about 6 p.m. Nothing after that, okay? 6.30 pushing it. But if you're gonna have your evening meal as well, make sure you're not having a massive stodgy meal full of complex carbohydrates like bread and rice and all that sort of stuff, okay? All that sort of stuff is just gonna make you really bloated and it's also gonna be difficult to fall asleep because your body's working hard to break down all these sugars and the molecules that are going in. So instead, have a light evening meal, okay? Have a salad, have some, some fish with it. You know, light things, not really, really heavy foods. And that, again, is gonna help you fall asleep faster. Also, make sure you're not drinking alcohol in the evening. That's a given as well. If you're having alcohol in the evening, again, it's gonna be difficult to fall asleep as well. So these are little tips that are gonna make a big difference. Now, moving on to tip Number nine, it's all about exercise. Look, exercise is great when it's done during the day, but it's not generally recommended to be doing high intensity exercise just before going to bed. However, there has been some new recent research that actually doing exercise closer to bed that isn't you know, super intense can help with sleep and can also help reduce the morning grogginess. But again, more research is needed than that as well. But for the time being, do your exercise, just make sure it's not just before going to bed. Leave a couple of hours at least, you know, if you, if you want to do it late, late on in the evening, talking, you know, 6 p.m. And then, you know, if you're going to sleep at like 9, 10, that's perfect, okay? Just make sure you're not doing super, super intensity exercise, like, I don't know, running a marathon, okay, <laughs> at 6 p.m. and then wanting to go to sleep, because that's going to be difficult. As long as there's moderate intensity exercise, it's all good. And moving on to tip number 10 for the sleep hygiene bit. Tip number 10 is all about napping. Look, you need to make sure that you're not napping throughout the day. If you are napping throughout the day, having a little short burst of sleep, having half an hour, 20 minutes, an hour, whatever, all of these are just gonna help reduce that sleep cycle that we're working with. So it's really important that we're not napping throughout the day and we have a set time for sleeping. We're gonna go through this next as well. Okay, so I hope you're finding this information helpful so far. If you have, please don't forget to click that like button. It's gonna help the video grow, it's gonna help it get to more people so more people are aware of it and it's also going to help me out as well so the next thing i want to talk to you about is the importance of sleep cycles and the importance of getting the right hours first of all this video is intended for adults and children should get more hours than adults okay if you want more information on that i will leave it in the description below but if you're an adult and you're watching this video i recommend you get eight hours of sleep per night and when we're talking about sleep cycles there's actually four stages 
in the sleep cycle. And healthy people who are sleeping generally transit between each cycle every 90 minutes or so. So let's learn a bit more about them. So stage number one is what we call the transient period. This is the period that you're actually falling asleep or beginning to fall asleep. It's the period that you're trying to sleep and you start to have little thoughts and you might start to have little dreams and you, and you start to forget where you are exactly, okay? That is the transient period of the sleep cycle. So you sort of forget your surroundings and you're falling into sleep. Now, once we're done with stage one, we're moving on to stage two of the sleep cycle. And this is where our heart rate and breathing rate starts to slow down. We should spend about half of our sleep in stage two. So after this comes stage three, and this is either what we call slow wave sleep or delta sleep. That's because the delta wave of the sleep actually slows down. And this then allows our body to start recovering itself and regenerating. The first time you go into stage three, it usually lasts about 45 to 90 minutes. And after that, when you, if you go back into stage three, it's a lot less than that. Now, stage three is a really important part of our sleep, but as we age as well, our stage three period, so that section actually reduces as well. And some people who are very elderly actually have no stage three. So moving on to the fourth stage, which we call stage R, it's also known as REM sleep, which you probably heard of which stands for rapid eye movement and in REM sleep the first stage usually happens about 90 to 110 minutes in to your sleep and it continues every 90 minutes so it cycles but it's a period where our brain is super active and there's a lot of chemicals flying about as well and also during REM sleep your heart rate does go up as well and it's usually a period where you kind of dream more and it's usually a period where you remember your dreams more as well. So why are these sleep cycles so important? Well these sleep cycles are important because it's a time for our body first of all to break down the glucose it's kind of a time actually for our bodies to recover ourselves it's like a mending period like I said it's like restarting the computer and everything refreshes and that's exactly what your body's doing so it's breaking down the glucose it's breaking down certain hormones creating hormones it's also helping with your immune system so loads of different things are happening during the sleep cycle to keep us nice and healthy so it's super important that we're getting good sleep and good sleep hygiene to give us the correct sleep cycles if we're not having good sleep hygiene we're gonna we're not gonna be able to get that good sleep cycle that we need to regenerate and restore our body to help us feel refreshed so the next question is when should you seek medical advice if you're struggling to sleep well there's quite a few scenarios for this so what I will do is I'll leave a box here full of different scenarios where you should actually seek medical attention for it feel free to pause the video right now give it a read. If it applies to you, please, please, please speak to your healthcare professional because that is the most important thing because your health is the most important thing. I also do have other videos on how to sleep faster as well, which I'll leave a link to up here and down here. And I'll leave a playlist for you actually to make life easier. And I really do hope that you find this information helpful. I hope you found episode one helpful and I hope episode two helps as well. Like I said, they work hand in hand. So you need to do them both together to really get a solid night's sleep help those sleep cycles work properly with the sleep hygiene and help you feel super refreshed. Let us know how you get on. Don't forget to like the video. Don't forget to share the video. Tell your friends, tell your family, tell your loved ones, tell everyone that you know. I really hope that you find this information helpful. Always remember you're awesome and I will see you next week. Okay, moving on to tip number six. Okay, and tip and, and moving on to tip number 10 and, and it also allows, I don't know what I, Hey guys, thanks for watching this week's video. Make sure to click that like, follow or subscribe button now to stay up to date with new weekly videos.